on the show, I'm going to show you how to make bone broth. Unfortunately, it's very complicated. There's lots of steps. It's very time consuming. There are a lot of ingredients. There's some technique involved. It requires special equipment and a lot of esoteric ingredients. I mean, ultimately, I'm not even sure you're going to get the hang of it. It's just, it's a lot. It's got all this, and a bunch of water, and a bunch of heat, and a bunch of time. Ultimately, it might not even be worth doing because you're never going to get the hang of it. I'm sorry. It's bone broth, and it's coming up next on... Hello and welcome to Tiny Kitchen Theater, where I make big things happen in this tiny kitchen. So, what did I put in the pot? Well, it all starts with this bag of bones. In the bottom of this bag, which I keep in my freezer, is the bones from a chicken that I roasted a while back. Normally, I would go ahead and make the stock right after I roast the chicken, because I use the same pot to do both. So, rather than clean it and start over, why not just continue on? Um, but I froze this one. I also froze all of the things that came with the chicken stuffed inside of the cavity, like the giblets. Uh, some companies even include the neck of the chicken along with it. So that's all in here as well. And then I just keep this bag in my freezer so that I can incorporate all of my vegetable trimmings. So whenever I slice an onion, for example, the peel goes in the bag. When I cut celery, the leaves go in the bag. If your recipe calls for just the white portion of leeks or spring onions or scallions, the green parts can go in the bag. The papery skin from your garlic, that also goes in the bag. The only thing that I wouldn't recommend putting in here are the trimmings from cruciferous vegetables. So you wouldn't want to put the stems from broccoli, the leaves from cauliflower, the um, leaves from Brussels sprouts, because that will impart a very bitter taste to your bone broth. Uh, so we just skip that. So this is just big bag of bones, giblets, neck, vegetable peelings. Then we also add, I had some celery hanging around. These are some fresh herbs that I had, but you can also incorporate dried. I have two bay leaves, some herb de Provence, some peppercorns, some rosemary, and some thyme. And then last but not least, you're gonna put in a tablespoon or two of apple cider vinegar, because what that will do is help the bones to break down and release all their collagen, which will give it nice body and a lot of nutrition as well. Once you get it all in here, what happens? You bring it up to a simmer very slowly. Or try to avoid getting this to boil because that's just a little too much, a little too much action. You want to bring this up to a simmer slowly and then you want to reduce the heat and let it simmer for two to four hours. Could you let it go much longer? You can, but in my experience, there's not much benefit to letting it go longer than that. Once the bones get mushy, they just kind of disintegrate in your hand, it's done. Um, I like using my cast iron for this. People also use an instant pot or a slow cooker. Okay, so it's been about three to four hours. During the first hour, I took the time to skim some of the foam off the top, but now you can see that all of the bones and skins and everything else that was in the mix has wilted way down. And now we can take a strainer over a bowl and just look at this liquid gold. And we're just going to keep doing this until we get all of this deliciousness into a bowl. I'm using a large bowl that's very open at the top because we want this to cool so that we can then transfer it into storage containers like this. We're going to let this cool completely, ladle it into these, stick it into the refrigerator. In the morning, there's going to be a fat cap on top. We're just going to skim that off. There are other purposes for that. When that's done, we can pour it from these into ice cube trays. Once you've got your stock frozen into cubes, you can just thaw the amount that you need for whatever you're making. I'd also like to point out that 
there was no salt that went into this. The reason for that is because this is not the final product. We'll use this for making other dishes, and when we do, that's when we're going to adjust the salt. Because if we make this too salty, there won't be anything we can do about it when we use it to cook. You can see what a gorgeous deep color this has. I'll show you. And that's because of all of the onion skins. They give it this beautiful color. And here it is, a bowl of liquid gold. We're going to let this cool off until we can put it into these plastic storage containers. They'll go into the refrigerator where they'll chill and then the fat will rise to the top. It'll be super easy to scoop off in the morning. Then we'll pour it from those storage containers into ice cube trays so that we can put it into the freezer and store it in zip top bags so that whenever we need just a little bit of stock, we can defrost just the amount that we need. I hope you found this helpful. Thanks for watching. Uh -huh.